Hey guys, we're back with video 11 dealing with meiosis. This is the last little section on this chapter, so hopefully you'll be able to get through it. Um, when we talk about meiosis, the formal definition is here. It's a process of reduction division in which the number of chromosomes per cell is cut in half through a separation of homologous chromosomes and diploid. Now basically what you need to look at meiosis is reduction division. What that means is in our normal cells, normal body cells in human, we have 46 chromosomes, and if we reduce this number or divide it, we're going to end up with cells that have 23 in them. Okay, so this is a process of meiosis of what we're going to do. Basically what you need to know for our test is that meiosis produces gametes, and remember gametes are sex cells. And this is what I just showed you. In humans, we have 46. It's going to end up making four 23 chromosome cells. Now, that might be a little bit confusing, but hopefully in a few minutes you'll understand. Here's how it does four. If you look up here at the top, you start out with the cell. How many, by the way, how many chromosomes does this cell have in it? So how many chromosomes? If you answer two, you're right. There's a red one and a blue one. So it has two chromosomes, it goes through interface, it doubles, so now there's four chromosomes. Then those, then those chromosomes separate by metaphase and anaphase until they get to telophase where you see two of the chromosomes are coming this way and two this way. And then it's going to go through the processes of PMAT again, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase again, but it doesn't go through interphase. So if you remember, interphase is where chromosomes replicate. So if we went from two to four, now two, two, two's in this one, two's in this one, and then those two separate. So you're going to end up with four cells that each one of them are genetically different. If you look, this cell is all red. This one has a little bit of blue on it. This one has a little bit of red on it, and this one has just blue. The blue and red came because right here, the two chromosomes laid over each other and did what we call crossing over. Crossing over just gives more variation. That's why sexual reproduction gives so much variation. All right? Okay, now, phases of meiosis, you already know them from mitosis. They basically occur in two, two phases or two divisions. Meiosis 1, which is identical to the cell cycle, IPMAP, and meiosis 2, which eliminates the I and just does the PMAP part. So meiosis 1 is interphase plus prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Now, if you remember... Interphase, the chromosomes double. Prophase, three things occur. The nucleus disappears. The chromosomes cool up for a trip and spindles start to form. Metaphase, they line up down the middle of the cell. Anaphase, they move the opposite ends of the cell. And telophase, they split into, opposite, uh, into two cells through the process of cytokinesis. Meiosis two, you go through PMAP, but you don't go through the interphase. So you go through prophase, they cool up, they un uh, they, the nucleus disappears, the spindles form, metaphase they line up down the middle, anaphase they separate, telophase they uncool, the nucleus reappears, uh, they form the two. So basically, why do we need to do this? The purpose of meiosis is to reduce the number of chromosomes in our gametes so that we get what we call a haploid number. Okay, so do haploid so that when we get haploid from mom, right, and from dad, that will give us the correct number of chromosomes, right? And the other reason is genetic variation. Meiosis, because of the crossing over and because it's only giving half the information, you don't give all of your instructions to your offspring, so it's going to continue to make that variation be there. Now, I love to end the chapter here and compare mitosis to meiosis because they're compared so much. Um, if you look at them, mitosis, you produce genetically identical cells. Genetically identical. So if it's a red cell, it's going to be a red cell. If it's a hair cell, it's going to be a hair cell. It's going to have exactly the same number of chromosomes, and they're identical. Now, if you'll notice on meiosis, meiosis makes genetically different cells. That's the first thing you should notice. The second thing I want you to notice is meiosis creates four cells, mitosis creates two cells. I like to think of mitosis as the same, and I like to think of meiosis as half. 
whenever I think of those. So mitosis is going to give me the exact same cell. Meiosis is going to give me half the chromosomes that's there in that original cell. Now, mitosis creates what we call somatic cells. In Duman County, we would call these body cells. And my meiosis creates gametes. All right, so basically here's what happens. In mitosis, you go from a diploid cell to two diploid cells. And in meiosis, you go from a diploid cell to four haploid cells. So this is haploid. And this is diploid. So that's a good little chart there for you to know. I mean, I would look at it for the test, and that kind of pulls everything together for you. Um, I hope this helps you, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me tomorrow.